Hi everyone, thank you for the, uh, for the invitation, Richard. Um, so PTC ThingWorks, uh, we are not a manufacturer, we are a software company. $1.3 billion in revenue with enterprise software. Uh, for the last 25 years, what we've been focusing on is helping manufacturers like T Connectivity, like National Instruments, and like 28,000 28, other manufacturers to transform the way they create, they produce, they operate, and they service products. And we do that by aligning our corporate strategy with the market forces out there that are asking, that are forcing manufacturing companies to change the way they do things, to change the way they create, they operate, they produce, they service their products. So over the years, our corporate strategy has been aligned with digitization, globalization, servitization, helping manufacturing companies again to change the way to do things. And that's why we've invested last year over $300 million to acquire very interesting award-winning IoT platform and combine them into one platform that we call now ThingWorks, which is actually a combination of Exceda and ThingWorks, to provide a platform for manufacturing companies to really leverage IoT. So why should we care as manufacturers with IoT? Well, one point we have to realize is that we've just passed the tipping point where today on the internet, there are more devices and machines connected than there are people on the planet. And very soon, we'll pass the tipping point where there's, there's going to be more machines on the internet than there are iPhones and tablets and iPads. Right now, there's a little more iPhone, iPad, and tablets than there are people, but we're going to pass that tipping point also. And we have saw a lot of data in terms of analyst information, how tremendous the revenue and the business opportunity is with IoT. But the real question is, how can we capture that opportunity? At PTC, we believe that the way to capture the opportunity with IoT is to actually transform it into a competitive advantage. That was uh, the topic and the content of an article that um, was the, um, the front cover page of the November Harvard Business Review talking about how to use IoT to drive actually two different competitive advantage. One, operational excellence. That's just the foundation. In order to be competitive, you need to be very good at what you're doing, adopt best practices, and get the performance and the productivity you need just to stay in business. But then the second competitive advantage is product differentiation. And IoT actually enables both. By using IoT in the shop floor, in your internal business processes, we can drive operational excellence. And by putting connectivity directly into the product, which I'll cover more in detail, then you can drive product differentiation. Let's stay for a second on operational excellence. What, what IoT really means here is that we have all have business processes across the entire enterprise, product design, quality, sales and marketing, service, manufacturing, supply chain, scheduling, logistics. All these processes have been working in a certain way for many years. But with IoT now, the opportunity we have is to make these real time by bringing real-time data feed directly from the machines, from the equipment, from the assets that you have on your shop floor. So we can enable smart factory, industry 4.0, smart manufacturing, however we call it, but make it real-time and flexible. But it's also about bringing into your business processes where it becomes even more interesting, data directly from your products in the field. And I'll cover a couple examples here, but just for a second, imagine is if, if as a marketing group, an engineering group, you would understand exactly how the customers are using your products in the field. Instead of having to think or to uh, come up with assumptions, what good bundles of, key, of features and capabilities would make sense, let's just look directly at how customers really have been using the products, maybe now, but also with all the uh, all the data you have from all over the years. And just to stay on manufacturing for a second, uh, 
At the bottom here, uh, connected manufacturing intelligence. That's probably the, uh, I would say, the low-hanging fruit in manufacturing instead of leveraging IoT. I'll cover one customer example, but this is where our customers are particularly interested. Because in an IoT platform, we have the unique ability to connect not only to systems, but directly to things, devices, and equipment. It means that you no longer need to expose all your machines on the internet in order to be able to pull the data. What you can do is take the agent, which is part of the IoT platform, put it on the equipment versus a product in the field, and the agent itself is the one that will open the secure communication through internet protocol with the server. So again, keeping everything you have in the factory, there is a way to connect to the equipment, pull the data, and make it part of the rest of the business processes. That's for operational excellence, and I'll come back to it with a couple examples. Now, if we look at product differentiation, what IoT really enables is to transform your products into smart connected products. By smart, we mean products that have embedded software. We've already been there for a number of years. Now, with IoT, what we can enable are not only products that are smart, but products that are connected, which means that as a manufacturer, I no longer lose sight of my products once they are shipped out the door to my customer. As a manufacturer now, what it means is that I can keep a permanent communication with my products as they are, used, as they are being used in the field. Why would that be interesting? Well, if we move through the maturity level and we get to the third one, actually to the second one with a connect, with a communication channel with your product, basic use cases we can enable is to connect to your product to remotely monitor the product. Then we can go to service, improving the service. So if you have equipment that are complex, equipment that requires you to send service technicians with parts in order to solve the problem, IoT, smart connected products, really gives you the ability to remotely connect, remotely monitor, and remotely serve the product to better understand what's the problem and make sure that the technician will show up with the right parts. As you collect more data, then you can analyze the data for example, for engineering to understand product usage. Then you can go into integrating that real-time data into your internal business processes. So you can enable not only smart factory, but also other processes such as uh, pay by the hour. And then ultimately, what we can do with smart connected products is enabling new revenue stream and new business models. And there are companies today that are taking what used to be a product business and are transforming it into a service business business by making the product now a system. So uh, let's go through a couple examples here. Uh, I've been asked to uh, keep it to uh, customer examples and use cases. And uh, that should help understand what can we do today with IoT and what are companies out there doing with IoT along that value curve that I just presented. So if we look at level three, which is again about remotely connecting and servicing the product so we can improve the service uh, productivity. Companies like Agilent, Debold, and Variant, that's exactly what they did. They use PTC's IoT platform that includes a connectivity layer. There is a connectivity agent that is on the product that opens the secure communication back with the company. It includes also a product cloud that manages all the data. And it includes also a application enablement platform that allows you to vis visualize all that data in a way that makes sense for you. So basically building connected application that show you exactly the data you're interested in based on your role. So they can reduce the cost of service and they can increase the, uh, the yield in the field and increase the first time fixed rate. Once you get data from the products, there's more than service that you can improve. If we look at the other business processes, this example here is a customer where design and marketing wanted to develop a new option for their farm equipment. They were thinking whether they should uh, design an option that would give a, a bigger fuel tank for the product. And here, there's really a, a paradigm shift. J just imagine today what we have to do. As an engineer, as a marketing person, I would have to call the uh, customer service group, or, or I would have to go into um, the, uh, the CRM system. 
in order to find some customers that I can call and ask them, so, okay, so how are you using the product? With IoT, it's, it's the other way around. Don't call your customers and ask them how they use your product. Rather, call your products and ask them, how is the consumer using you? And by looking at the usage data directly into the products, the farm equipment tractor in this case, actually what the engineers found out is that there was no need for a bigger fuel tank. There was a best practice in the farms to top the tank every morning. And by looking at fuel consumption, they saw that nobody was actually probably needing a, bit, a bigger tank. But again, the fundamental shift here is instead of guessing what people are doing with your product, there's a tremendous opportunity for engineers, once we collected the data, to really understand what should be the next feature, what are exactly the right bundles of features that we should uh, put on the market, and which are the special capabilities that we see only a handful of customers seems to be using and that are a good candidate for upsell and options. On the manufacturing side, uh, that's probably where today we have the biggest number of smart connected products that are already in use. If we look on a typical shop floor, on all your shop floor, if you're a manufacturing company, chances are you'll have a lot of equipment, a lot of machines that are generating a lot of data. The problem on the shop floor is not that the machines are not smart and connected. The problem is that we have islands of data. We have machines that generate a lot of data, but we need to connect that machine data with business systems so we can have people take the right decisions and see exactly what they need. And here, what IoT provides is a unique opportunity to connect machines, systems, and people. Because on an IoT platform, there's an agent that goes on the equipment, which is the one that opens the secure communication. For manufacturing, it means that, again, you do not need to expose all your equipment on the internet. What you can use is an IoT platform to open the communication with critical areas in your shop floor on your PLCs, on your equipment, and bring that data and combine it with business systems so we can have unified real-time visibility into operations and simplify that information into actionable dashboards. If we continue across, uh, to go on the value curve, uh, we get at level five, uh, enhancing and optimizing other business processes. I've talked a little bit about manufacturing. These examples here are example of what customers change in their inter internal business processes leveraging IoT. Gerber Scientific, they, among other things, what they produce are uh, big equipment for uh, apparel manufacturers. And what they did in their case is include sensors directly on the equipment that will alert the manufacturer and Gerber Scientific whenever the equipment is found to be operating at uh, conditions that are, out of condi that are out of boundaries. So Gerber Scientific will tell the manufacturer, if you want to use this equipment, these are the humidity threshold that you can work with. Here's the temperature, temperature threshold that you can work with. And again, the machines will automatically alert the manufacturer. And if the manufacturer continues, then that goes into warranty management. And Gerber Scientific knows exactly what happened. Waters and Seal there are just other, uh, other examples of customers who change also uh, some of their business processes by leveraging real-time data from their products. In the case of Seal there is here, it's actually leveraging the real-time data from their products in order to change the billing process and make it usage-based billing. And then last step that I was uh, presenting on the, on the value curve is about changing the business model or opening new revenue opportunities. One example here, all traffic solutions. They used to be a manufacturer of a digital signage for uh, roads. And what they did is connect all their, um, all their devices, all their hardware together, make the data available, and then created a new service for law enforcement and for cities to leverage all the data that is collected from those road signals. So these are just examples of what manufacturers are doing today. And again, uh, as a takeaway, I would say an IoT platform, one way to look at it is by thinking about what's the competitive advantage that I want as a company. And in terms of competitive advantage, there, there's two big classes. 
One, it can significantly increase your operational performance, so you can go after operational excellence. And second, it allows you to transform your products into smart and connected products to go after product differentiation for lower cost, higher quality, and increased revenue. Thank you.